Hi, everyone. And I'm just going to walk you through my new device, Coalescence. Uh, it's a Max for Live instrument. Um, it's a sample based instrument. So it works with samples. And um, I'm going to drop in a sample now. And what it does is analyze the sample and um, cut it in slices and feed them into a neural network. And you can see the result of the neural network, how it organizes um, the slices here in the center. And um, I can go to this network tab here and just keep um, training or learning um, those, uh, the net, have the network keep learning those slices. And you, you see it here, it's kind of changed how it's organized. Um, so this device basically, um, <clears throat> and by the way, you can drop multiple samples in. Um, it's, it centers around different ways to play back the audio in these slices organized by the neural network. So it just takes advantage of how the, um, of this process and, um, and uses it um, in different ways. Um, depending on the modes, which I'll go through. And um, so this will be like a general walkthrough video for the whole device. Um, and then I might, I'll do smaller um, walkthroughs for individual parts of the device to really dive into them. <clears throat> so I'll just kind of rush through things for this video, um, just for the sake of time. So um, I'll go through each of these um, playback modes and We'll learn a bit how mo how more of how the network works, and um, and then I'll kind of be jumping through these tabs, but I'll go through them afterwards or as needed. <clears throat> so the first playback modes a a bit like a classic sampler almost, um, where you just choose one starting point um, to play back from, just like a sampler. So I'm just going to move this around. And when I click on here, we're going to hear a preview of the sample closest to the cursor. So let's say I want to just start here. Then I'm playing uh, my MIDI keyboard. So it just works like a normal sampler here. here. Um, that's at the very end. Anyway, um, so. Um, yeah, so it's pretty easy to grasp how this mode works, but there's a few interesting you, things you can do in this mode. Or you can, of course, just, um, for example, use it as a way to sort through different samples. I'm just going to be dropping in some other samples here. Here, I'll just have these two. So now there's these two. Let me. Um, and then now the other sample I just dropped, which is this one is uh, cut up by its transients and thrown into the network. And I'll kind of preview around. OK, so both samples are in this network now. And therefore, I can move this around. And we can start on this sample. Or I can move the starting point to here. And yeah, and I say starting point because uh, each of these circles represent the different slices. Uh, they represent, well, the start of those slices. So you're basically just moving between different starting points. Um, there's an interesting, uh, and now, yeah, in this mode, you could just like map, you know, these uh, number boxes and modulate them and use however kind of open-ended. Uh, there's an interesting mode where if you click this um, microphone, it will um, allow an incoming audio to control where this starting point is. Um, I'll get into that later when I get into the input tab. Um, yeah, and then you, I just have a glide down here too. So if I move the Y down, it'll glide. Duh. Um, so, sorry, I thought my voice was gonna <laughs> trigger Sam. Okay.
Okay, so um, I'm just going to jump into the next mode. Uh, the next mode is rings mode. And so rings mode, in rings mode, you can create these circles or rings. And if I hover over the different ones, maybe you can see here in this top corner, um, it says the assigned note of this ring. So if I, this one says C3. So if I press C3, it will, it will create a voice in that ring. And this one's C sharp. And then there's D sharp and D. Yeah, so it's a little bit like slice mode um, in simpler. And in fact, this device is made to look kind of like simpler. Because in many ways, has function similar, but um, I'll obviously go much more in depth into this whole network thing and different playback modes. Um, so in rings mode, um, you can, uh, right now it's in auto ring mode. So if I just create a number of rings, it'll, it'll kind of like find clusters or groups and, um, and make little rings on them. And if you hold con control or command and drag on one of them, you can change the radius. And when you let go, it changes it for all of them. And when it's a bigger radius, it'll create a, a random uh, position in the ring. So this one's C3. And hopefully you can tell I, I keep clicking C, and it's generating a note in a different part of the ring every time, or a different position. Um, so this one's D sharp 3, and if I play that, Yeah, so you can do a lot of things with this. Like if you had drums and you were um, analyzing the sample by frequency, then um, it could have groups of drums and you can automatically create rings around them, like around kicks and snares, et cetera. But um, if you're not happy with the auto creation of it, um, you can just... Here, let me turn off um, the preview mode so that now when I click here, it doesn't just create a sound. So now you can um, move the rings around however you want, and it switches to manual mode. And you can, in manual mode, you can resize them individually, and you can change the assigned note. So this one's on C3, but I can change it to G5 if I want. Um, I'm gonna change it back to C3. And then um, we'll also here, so you have this start. So that's where it starts assigning the notes from. So if I went down to G2, now the C3 has become G2 and everything else adjusted accordingly. Um, now you see I can like, OK, when, when auto mode is on, so I'll turn it on, how it does the notes is from left to right. So left is C3. And all the way right is the highest note, which is E3. Um, now, if I'm in manual mode and switching these around, but let's say I, for whatever reason, I want now them just to be reordered, starting from the start note left to right. Then you press the reorder button, and now it goes C3 to the highest note. And that way you can kind of like visually see it with your keyboard, maybe, if you have a lot. Just depends. And then, yeah, you can clear it. All right, so that's rings mode. It's good for all kinds of stuff, like quick slicing, drums, any, anything really. You can just do all sorts of things with it. But it is nice for like one shot kind of stuff. Um, OK, then this last mode is paths. Um, in paths, you see here there's like a vertical running uh, key slider from C to B. and um, so in paths mode, oh, by the way, I, I should have mentioned it in point mode. So in point mode, when you press the keys, the MIDI notes, it repitches um, the playback like a classic sampler. So that's how point mode handles MIDI. Rings mode handles MIDI like by assigning it to these rings. Um, and then paths mode handles MIDI by like this. If you, if you press any C note, 
you can draw a path. And so if I press C, um, the, the playback will follow uh, this path. And um, yeah, and uh, that's C of any octave. So if I press any C, it'll play this path. Or, or um, this point, if I just did a point. And um, then you can do that for all these 12 chromatic tones. So I could go to E and draw a path here. I'm going to go to playback for a second and lower the loop size and turn looping on. And um, then we can hear it loop through the path uh, E. And then let's go to C and see if I did this path. And then I'm holding E now too. I'm gonna hold E and C at the same time. Yeah, so that's kind of how it works. Um, how, the, how to draw and stuff. So you double click to create the next point. You can hold shift and click to delete a point. Oh, by the way, you can hold shift and click in rings to delete a ring. Um, and then you just drag them to move them around. Um, and then you have a clear per path here. Yeah, so that's the playback modes. And there's a little, if you hover over this and click the eye, you get to see the info that I just described. Uh, you hold Alt to see this lit up too. Okay, so now that we know all the playback modes, I'm gonna go through each of these tabs. Um, and describe what they do. So this tab that's been open is the sample tab. You can select the sample. You can drop up to 2,000 samples. Um, I don't recommend to do it because this whole network only holds 2,500 points. And so eventually, it'll just get too full. But if you have just tons of one shops with single transients, you can drop a bunch of them and populate this. So. Um, in here, you can drop single samples or folders of samples, too. Um, so you can just drop folders of drum samples, and it'll automatically analyze them. OK, an important thing to know is this button here, this Save button. Right now, like this, it's off. Um, if it's on, then when you drop in a sample, it gets analyzed and all. Um, if you want. For long samples or things like that, it can take more time. So if you want to save the analysis, and it will save a file like next to the original file, kind of like the Ableton does with the ASD. Um, so if you have this on, it will save when, and if you have this on and drop in a sample, it will save the analysis file, and um, that's all the feature extraction and everything, and therefore you don't, if you had a bunch of samples loaded or long ones, you won't have to wait any time. It'll just automatically load them. And yeah, and, and that's not just per preset. Like if you drop in that sample, it will never have to be analyzed again. It'll just load that analysis file. So this is good for making presets and stuff, but you might want to have it off, off by default um, just in case you don't want to create a bunch of duplicate files. Um, I just keep it on when I want to do like presets or a long file that I use a lot. Um, so here you can select the sample. Um, down here, this page, if you had like many samples, you can scroll through the pages with that. Um, OK, here on the sample itself, if you hold and drag, you can select the region that you want to be in the neural network. And um, if you hold shift and drag, you can see, let me turn preview on again, because it will preview it. Um, if you hold shift and drag, you can see and hear where the slice is in the network. Um, so that'll show you where the sample is in the network. Um, Below each sample, you can change the sample's individual volume, the pitch with a fine tuning. Um, this here is the the transient sensitivity. 
So if it's down, you'll have less transients. And if it's up, you're going to have a lot. Um, and then, and this is all per individual sample, um, so it's not going to affect the other samples. Um, okay, you can reverse the sample. So you can have some sample playbacks reverse, some not. You can even drop in the same sample and like just change some of these settings to have um, it at different octaves and stuff. It won't make it any heavier or anything like that. Um, X is to remove the sample. Um, and then, yeah, I told you about the pages. OK, so that's sample. Network. Um, in network, so here's where you train it and deals with it, the training of it. So each time it tra tra you train or, or learn the network, it will change basically the organization of these. And, um, and it will affect the weights of the network um, so that when you send in other samples or if you send in an audio input, it will place those samples or those moments of sound at different points in this two-dimensional map. Um, based on what it's learned. So learning, this is how many, each time you trigger a learning process, this is how many times it will repeat. And when it repeats, it sends in the sam all the slices of the sample over and over again. And if you're training all of them, like what happens if you press more restart, if I press more, it trains all the samples again. Um, this is the strength of the learning. So if it's low, they will make smaller moves, essentially. Um, and if it's higher, the learning will be greater. Um, you'll have to research a lot of this if you want to know how to really train the network well. Um, you, you can research m more about um, training neural networks. This is an SOM network. but. Um, but you can get away a lot with just the settings I have, and it's it's pretty forgiving too. Um, so just play around with stuff. But if you train um, more, if you're going to drop in tons of samples, you might want to have a lower strength so it doesn't become biased, basically. Um, and and if the strength is too high, then the first sounds it learns on, it will learn those basically. Uh, it will be more biased to those, or it, or maybe it depends what you do. Okay, so restart will clear the weights of the network and start from the beginning. So if I just did one repetition in there and press restart, you see all the weights are down here in the corner. Um, this is because I don't randomize the network, and that's because I want you to get consistent um, results with a small amount of data. Um, otherwise, it's best to randomize a neural network. Um, so if I keep pressing more from here, we can see it spreading out. And um, what comes into play here, too, is the radius over here. So it creates little neighborhoods or groups or clusters of the sample slices. And um, the radius says kind of like how big the neighborhood or cluster size is. So you'd have to play around with that a lot um, if you want them to be more spread out. Um, let me train it a bit more. It, or if you want, if I pull the radius in, um, they'll, they'll start pulling closer together, to independent ones. It also depends on which one you start at from the beginning. will change how it'll look later. Um, so you should play around with it. Uh, if you want a lot more groups to form, you want a smaller radius, but you also want it to spread out well, and it will, it will take a while to spread with a small radius. So, I, yeah, um, you'll just have to play around a lot with that. Um, but you can get by, like I said, with my initial settings a lot and just um, keep training it. And um, append, you probably want to keep append, append mode on. Um, it just is like if you dropped in a new sample, it won't affect any of the other positions except for the one that you added. And it will just add those ones. Um, and then it won't retrain or move around the other sample slices. And likewise, if you change, say, 
this um, um, range of the sample or any other thing, it also will only affect that sample in the network and none of the other ones. Now, if you had penned off, every change will affect every sample. Um, OK, here in setup, so this one's important. This is the kind of spectral features that the network learns. So chroma is like, like kind of like chromatic. It's like uh, the 12, 12 tone. Um, uh, sorry, kind of like the intensity of values at each of the 12 tone um, um, bins. Uh, here, let me. So the first one is chroma, and chroma is kind of like um, from the sound, it will analyze it kind of based on the chromatic scale. Um, so it's good for if you want um, to organize these groups based on kind of like their notes or melodic, harmonic kind of content. Um, it's like a 24 step octave. Um, so the next one is Mel. And Mel, um, and we can see the color difference. Uh, it's a bit different looking. Um, Mel and Bark are kind of like psychoacoustically <laughs> informed um, scalings of the frequency. So that is to say, for our purposes, they work good. For things for analyzing things based on low to high frequencies, so like drum sounds or like a lot of other sounds, if you don't want it based on like kind of melodic tenth content, but just like if it's a lower frequency or a higher frequency, you you would use melon bark, um, good for drums and 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 anything if you just want it um, organized by that. And they're very similar. You can research them. Mel is more common, but you can also use bark. They're they're definitely very different kind of like scaling, slopings of the frequency. So you will get different results. Um, and speech, speech is using the mel sepstral coefficients. So those are used a lot for speech analysis. So you can use it. Um, I've been playing with it, and it does like organize vowels and things like this pretty well into clusters. So um, yeah. And then, uh, OK, so this is a big one. Transients only, um, by default, transients only is on. Um, and that's like having all these, only these slices of transients are fed in the network. Now, like oftentimes, you won't want that. Um, I'll turn it off, and you'll see why, by default, I don't have it on. It's a lot slower training the network, because when you turn transients only off, um, it instead sends every spectral frame into the network. And now you don't even see the transients anymore. And look, here's the network now, and there's a lot more points on there. Um, so yeah. Um, and like I said, this only has 2,500 cells, so not every point is on there. They get kind of overwritten by each other. Um, but yeah, um, so that's... You know, com often you'll want transients only off to get like a bunch of, you know, like kind of morphing between things and a lot more options. But transients only on works well for a lot. You can even turn up just the transient threshold ridiculously high and it still will be, um, it still will be a lot quicker than transients off if you just want to get more points in there. Okay. Um, what else is here? Clear all trans samples. So if you press this button, it will clear the network and it will clear all the samples you dropped. It'll just reset all that. Um, okay, over here is the preview. So if preview is on, whenever you touch this with your mouse, you'll hear a preview of loop of the closest sound to the mouse. And you can control the gain and the loop length and all. And then here it's like, right now it's the, it plays the sample slice closest to the mouse. But if you turn that off, it'll only play the one that's under it. So if you're not over a sample, it won't play anything. Um, OK. Whew, that's a lot. I think the next ones will be easier to grasp. OK, the next is uh, playback. So playback is pretty just like normal sample playback for the most part. 
You can ch change the voices. You can reverse um, the playback. And that will be, if you reversed it here, it will be the opposite of that here. So keep that in mind. Um, you can transpose it, fine tune it. Um, you can, so this button, um, if it's on, then if a MIDI pitch comes in, like in point mode, it will be the, it will be repitched by the keyboard, like in a normal sampler. But if you turn that off, then every note will play the same pitch, um, which may be desirable. Okay, slice. So this is how it chooses which sample to play back when you press a note. And by default, it's on nearest, so it'll play back the slice nearest to it. But just like the preview play, you can also just have it play only when it's on top of a slice. So if I try to play, it won't play anything right now. OK. Um, sorry, that was a bug. <laughs> All right. Um, so then you have the loop size here. And you can set that in synced time with this um, icon. Um, when you press this, it will do the loop size based on the space between transients. So let me go back that. All right, so now that's like that. Yeah, if I play that, see it was only playing in the loop between the transient points. Um, OK, now here you have the phase vocoder. Um, it's a bit slushy, um, but if you, if you turn it on, um, then you're able to slow down um, the playback. And when you do that, if you go really sl slow speeds, make sure you turn the fade off, um, which is a loop fade, because it'll get frozen at the beginning and it'll be just silent. So now we're at like 2% playback speed. And if I play the note, Yeah, it plays it back really slow, very spectrally sound to it. Um, it has, so I have, I give you this attack and decay. The attack's cool for like, yeah, if you're slowly moving around between points. Let me turn the preview off. And then it will kind of, um, kind of blend between them spectrally. So if I start playing a note. And then if I move to here. it to blend between them. You can kind of like freeze the spectra and then move between it and use the attack and decay to blend. You kind of have to dial all that in. And it is a, is it a cheap sound. I might try to improve it someday. But um, yeah, you can get cool kind of tonal stuff with it. Um, let's see. So here you have the loop that just says it's one shot or a loop. Um, you have a fade. And this is like a fade window to prevent clicks, but also to shape the grain if you're having it like looping. Um, so you can do it. If how, how it works is if the fade is up and these are both at 0%, center and slope, then um, it's basically just a triangle window right now. Um, yeah, you can kind of maybe hear it. Yeah, it's a triangle window. And then you can move it to the left to right to make a ramp. And then you can slope it exponentially. And I can move it to the right now. Yeah, so you can create a window fading with that. And then if you slope it negatively, it's more logarithmic. 
And so, yeah, you can use it to prevent clicks, but also to shape it. OK, and then here on the right side, it these parameters change depending on which mode you're on. For point mode, um, you have the options. To, this one says re-trigger. So if you're in a one-shot mode, like now, then I'm holding the note and it stops because it's one shot. Um, but if re-trigger is on, then if I moved to a new sample point and the one shot's done, it will re-trigger it and play again. So I'll hold this note and then I'll move it. So yeah, it re-triggers it now whenever I move it. Um, note glide is just a, a pitch glide. Just like a portamento. Um, latch, slice latch. So if you're moving this around, it will latch the position when the voice starts. So I'll move this around and loop it. And you see I'm moving it around, but it latched it at that point. OK, um, modulation. So this is pretty classic modulation. You have just two LFOs, two envelopes. The first envelope's an amp envelope by default, but you can use it for other stuff too, which you all route in this routing section, which you can scroll down. And you have the LFOs and envelopes. And you have two destinations for everything. Destination A, you have. Uh, some mix destinations, the filters, um, things about the play, the position, uh, gra loop size, speed is if you're on phase vocoder, that's the speed. Um, oh, whoops, I skipped something, sorry. So I had to explain the other menus that will pop up. So if you go to rings, you have these options. New slice re-trigger is the same thing as the other re-trigger but a uh, rings mode. Um, selection is, so remember I said, if you, I press C, it'll play a random point in this whole ring. That's if it's in range, but if you change this to center, it only plays the point at the center. Um, if I go to paths mode, here are the options. So I'll, I'll make a path. Um, you have, the looping mode, so this one is one shot. And then you can have forward looping. And then you have boomerang looping. And then you can reverse any of those. Um, and then you have the interval for each point, so I can make it go slow. And that you can do in quantized beats. And then, um, so this slice, that says if it's going to play all the samples and move down the path, or if it's only going to jump to the points. So right now, it's going through the whole path. But if you do that, it'll jump between the points. Yeah. Um, OK, we are in modulation. Um, yeah, so here at the bottom, you have the interval for that path you can modulate. Um, OK, so you can choose a destination like pitch. Choose an amount. It's bipolar, too. Um, so and then let me, so there's some other modulators. So spray, you get two random sprays. So those are just a random spray value created per voice, so it's great for random panning or all kinds of stuff. Um, now it'll have a random pan each voice. Yeah, um, you have two of those. OK, these two I'll have to explain later. These are the in, in, input audio that you can route. Um, here's the velocity. So the rest of them are the MIDI. Um, modulator, so you have velocity, which this button here says if it controls the amplitude or not, which is on by default. And then you have uh, the key value of the MIDI. You have aftertouch, pitch bend, and mod wheel. OK. Um, so the final tab is the input. So this input 
you can route from another track, so I'll just route my voice, I guess. Hi, this is my voice. And you can see we get a few options for it. So you have the pitch, uh, which is just a rudimentary pitch detector, which you can glide. Um, you have the envelope follower, so I can boost it at some decay. And cool, I have an envelope follower. So these two things, the pitch and envelope, you can map here. There's in env and invit pitch. So in env, I could match, uh, I could map to something like I don't know the x position, and then if I play this ba ba, my voice is sending it kind of to the right. Ba ba. Maybe I should be in point mode. It's easier. Ba ba ba. Yeah, and then I can map the pitch too. I guess I'll do that to y. Yeah, it's kind of working. All right, and yeah, like I said, you can glide the pitch and the envelope shape. All right, another thing you can do with the input is uh, trigger. So by default, you trigger voices with MIDI, like a normal synth. But you can also instead have voices triggered by whatever you routed. So I'll do my voice. Ba, boom. Ba, ba, ba. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So now my voice, the transients are triggering voice creation, and you can change the threshold of that to make it more or less sensitive. And then you have, when a voice is created, you have a release option. So right now it creates a voice that lasts 200 milliseconds. You can also do it by beats. Um, you can also do legato. So that will hold the voice until a new one is created. Ba, ba, ba. Um, another thing you can do with the voice is control, like I said at the beginning, this point. Um, so basically, the network learned all these slices you dropped in, and that's all it knows. And then so if you press this button, um, it will move that point. Let me turn off. Let me turn off the position modulations. OK, so now we're no longer modulating the position. And now the position is just controlled by, um, you see this little red dot jumping around. It's just controlled by my voice talking now. And it will basically move that red dot at any moment to what that sound is closest to like in here. So if there's nothing close to the sound like in this here, it'll just go wherever. And if there's something remotely similar, it'll go there. And remember, this sound is organized by different things. So if the network is on chroma, now it's kind of based on chromatic pitch. So it'll kind of put the incoming audio to the closest kind of uh, chromatic pitch. Um, so the more pitches you have that are similar, it should move it to there. And another, and then if it's Mel, Bark, et cetera, it, you know, it'll be based on those things. So um, now, uh, now, yeah, for example, I could remember there's this latch thing. So I could latch the position for every, uh, every time a voice is created and then trigger voices with my voice um, right now and then have the position changed by my voice. Test. Hi. Do, 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 do. Oh, there's a pitch modulation. Let me turn that on. Yeah, so my voice is just changing where the position is and then triggering a sample. Um, down here below it, you have a through volume. So you could use this kind of like an effect and send, if I mute my voice, I can send it through here. OK. Um, yeah, and I'll probably make a, a video about kind of getting cool results out of this. There's a lot of nuance to this um, thing that I just was showing you. Um, and the transients affect it. So I'll make maybe a video with good tips on how to get better results with it. Um, OK, so. Now is just this very bottom. 
Um, let me turn this back to, or I'll just keep them triggered. My my voice, maybe. Okay, so this um, this very very bottom, we have the filter. Do 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 do. So you have the filter here. Um, you can there's a ladder filter option. Um, just slightly more CPQ consuming, but not really noticeable. Um, there's another filter option, which is a a, a, a formant filter. Yeah, so hopefully you can kind of hear that. And um, yeah, you can slow it here to get um, more pronounced formants, or the other way around. Um, yeah, and here at the very end is just a panning and the gain. And then so this LR is like, um, deals with just stereo processing. So if this is off, it will play back mono. Um, and if this is on, it will play back stereo. Um, and you can save some CPU from that maybe because it will have mono filters and all. Okay, I think that uh, sums everything up. So yeah, let me take on this. Yep. All right, it was a big video. Um, but this device has a lot going on, so I hope you enjoy it.